Hello and welcome to another video in the Tech Byte series from CMG. My name is Mohammed, and in this video, we will be showing you how to set up an optimization study in CMOST. In CMOST, a typical workflow is to start learning about the model through sensitivity analysis. Once we have grasped a good understanding of the sensitive parameters in the model, we start history matching to achieve confidence in forecasting the model. A third step is to work on optimizing the model to achieve a maximum, like maximum recovery, or a minimum, like minimum water cut or cost, for example. After optimization, uncertainty analysis studies are conducted to evaluate the outcomes of different uncertainties in the reservoir model. The end result of these studies is a model that represents the reservoir in the field and could be used for future development plans. In optimization, we are trying to improve an objective function, like finding a maximum net present value or finding a maximum recovery, and etc. And typically with optimization studies, the parameters that would be adjusted are operational parameters, such as well constraints, well locations and spacing, hydraulic fracture parameters, and so on. We classify optimization through two classifications. The first is a mathematical optimization, which values precision over speed. For example, 1 times 10 minus 6 is better than 1 times 10 minus 2, even if it takes longer to achieve that accuracy. The second optimization classification or method is the engineering optimization, which values speed. And here, 1 times 10 minus 2 is better than 1 times 10 minus 6 if it takes less time. In CMOS, the optimization approach is the engineering approach. Now let's move to the demo. In a CMOS project, to create a new optimization study, we can click on the new study icon on the right side of the window. Give the study a name and call the data set that we will, be, we will be performing the optimization on. If you have not defined a CMOS master data set previously, we can keep this box checked and we're going to change the type of the study to optimization. And this will create an optimization study in our CMOS project. Double click on the study to enter it. From the main study page, we're going to fill in the information on the tree view to the left side from top to bottom, starting with fundamental data. In fundamental data, we're going to pick original time series, and these are similar time series to what you typically plot from an SRT file in results. For an optimization case, some of the plots that we can look at to evaluate the optimization process are the cumulative productions of fluids. So we're going to generate the cumulative production of oil, gas, and water um, in here. So we're going to click insert, change the origin type to sectors, change the origin name for entire field, and choose the property as oil production cumulative. Then repeat the same process to get uh, gas production cumulative and water production cumulative. Once we've defined the three plots, we can also see that the plot from the base case is generated at the bottom of the window. Next, we're going to move to the parameterization section. In the parameterization section, we're going to define the parameters that will control the output or the result of the optimization process. Click on parameters. In here, we'll see that initially we have no parameters that were defined. So we're going to use the CMOS master dataset or CMM file to introduce those parameters to CMOS. This can be done either through CEdit or Builder. For this exercise, we're going to use CEdit. Now 
Before we proceed with selecting CMOS parameters, in this step, we should be fully aware of how our base case is forecasted. For example, if we go to the Wells and Recurrence section, we know we have a water injector that's injecting water at a rate of 4,000 meters cubed per day. And it has a, another operating constraint, which is constraining the bottom hole pressure of the injector at 20,000 kilopascal. So we can parameterize the water injection rate by highlighting the number, right clicking and uh, choosing create parameter. We can call this one water inch rate. And we keep the default value. Notice in the names I used uh, underscore because you cannot use space or dash. So just keep that in mind. Click OK. And we parameterized the um, water injection rate. If we're assuming or if we think this well is not drilled yet, and we're testing different positions for the well in the reservoir or the model, then we can use the perforation card to optimize the location of the well. For this example, I will keep the um, location of the well in the I-plane constant and in the K-layers constant, and I will change its location in the J-plane. That can be done by highlighting uh, the number 16 here, since it's I, J, and K, right-clicking and choosing Create Parameter. I'll give this a name as uh, inch well j layer and keep the default value from the base case. And then we need to do the same for the remaining number 16 in all the perforations. An easy way to do that would be to highlight the CMOS line, copy it, and then by holding Alt on the keyboard, we can highlight the column that has all the values of 16 and then paste the CMOS line. Now CMOS will change the plane in which uh, the, the J plane in which this will will be drilled at uh, while still uh, maintaining its true vertical form. We also have producers. So if you scroll down a little bit, we'll see that we have a producer that's operating at a, a minimum bottom hole pressure of 6,000 kilopascal. And it also has a monitoring uh, constraint that is mo monitoring the gas oil ratio um, with a value of 1,000. So if it reaches 1,000, it shuts the layer that's producing that amount of GOR. So we're going to parameterize the GOR value by highlighting the number, right-clicking and choosing Create Parameter. And then we'll call this one Max GOR and keep the base case value. The same thing uh, needs to be done to the other producing well, so we have two of them. For this one, we can just highlight it, right-click, create parameter, and then we don't need to name it again, we choose the existing name already, so that these two parameters are linked for uh, the same value. Okay. Once we're done parameterizing, we can save the file, exit C-Edit, and click on Import. And CMOS will read in uh, the parameterization that was done uh, in C-Edit. By default, all the default values will have a 25% increase and decrease for the lower limit and upper limit of the range. We can keep the water injection rate as it is and the um, max GOR as it is. But for the um, location of the well in the J layer, for the injector, we need to change the source to a discrete integer, since this reference to a block address 
and any block address needs to be an integer. Then we're going to generate values um, to be used for this study. So we click on generate. This model has 35 J planes. So we'll choose the minimum value of one and the maximum of 35. And then the total number would be 35. So we're telling CMOS to try positioning the well in all the planes and see which one is best. And because we're changing the location of the injector well through CMOS, we need to submit any newly generated data set into Builder so that Builder can recalculate the well index based on the perforations and recalculate the block geometries. So we go to pre-simulation commands, click on insert, and choose run CMG Builder silent. Next, we move into the objective functions. The objective function is essentially what we're trying to maximize or minimize. And there are multiple options for it. Uh, one of them is the basic simulation results. So we can go into this one and insert a new objective function that will be oil. We can name it oil recovery factor and then choose it from the options here so we change the origin type to sectors origin name to entire field and look for oil recovery factor so this is one objective function we can ask CMOS to try and maximize another objective function is history match quality and this is related to history matching but Essentially, history matching is a form of optimization where we try to minimize the error. Another one that we're going to use here is net present value. So this can be done either internally in CMOS or you can use advanced objective functions to link um, an Excel spreadsheet or an external source code that you want to calculate the net present value on through advanced objective functions option. And here we're going to use net present value. So the higher level objective function here is the field MPV. Then we're going to create two local MPV definitions. One of them would be oil revenue. And we'll uh, label the unit in dollars. And another one would be water injection cost and we also label the unit in dollars now inside of the oil revenue we want to go to the bottom section and generate uh, sources for that function. So click on insert and choose uh, origin type as well as origin name. We're going to choose producer one property. We're going to choose oil rate monthly. And then here as a unit value, we'll put an average uh, oil price around $85 with a conversion factor. Uh, from barrels to meters cubed, so 6.28 approximately. Then we need to repeat the same for producer two. Instead of, if we had a lot of wells, instead of doing this manually, you can just click on repeat and then choose the wells from here. Then we'll have the same um, essential definition for the, the other well. Then we go to the water injection cost, local MPV and add the same row for the injector well. So click on insert, origin type, keep as wells, origin name, change to injector one, property will be water rate. We keep the start time, end time, and discount rate as, it, as they are. Change the unit value to minus one, 
to reference a cost and adjust the conversion factor to 6.28. And with this, we have finished setting up the objective functions. Then we move into the engine settings. In the engine settings page, we can see the study type has been set to optimization. This is something we've set from the beginning. The engine name or the engine in use is CMG DECE, Design Experiment Controlled Evolution. And there are other engines that could be used, but for this uh, exercise, we're going to keep uh, CMG DECE. And then we see the default amount of experiments that will be created, and this can be adjusted depending on the preference and needs. So for example, here I'll set it to 150. Global objective function name, if we click on the drop down menu, we'll choose one of the objective functions that we've created. So for this exercise, let's pick field MPV, and then the search direction, we can choose either to maximize or minimize depending on the objective function. In our case, we want to maximize the field MPV. So we choose maximize. Then we go to simulation settings and um, specify where we're going to run this study and the data sets that will be generated from it. In this case, we're running this locally and we're going to run six jobs at a time. That's, uh, we set six under max concurrent jobs. The simulator and the version will be picked up from the data set itself. As for the number of cores, that could be specified accordingly. In this case, we're going to keep it as one. And the only thing that I will change here is the max runtime per job. This depends on your knowledge about the data set. I know that the data set in use is a simple, quick data set that should not take even one hour. So I'll just set one as a threshold. If the data set takes more than one hour, then CMOS in that case will kill the data set to expedite the study. And then we go to control center and hit play. Confirm the configuration. And now CMOS will generate data sets, hand them to Builder to recalculate the perforation geometry and the injected well um, index. And then those data sets will be submitted into the simulator and CMOS will read back the results to evaluate the objective function accordingly. After 20 minutes of allowing the study to, to process, we can see that the results are starting to converge into a specific direction. So even though we stated that we would like to process 150 experiments, stopping at this point would save us a lot of time since we're not expecting different results with any of the experiments that would be generated after this. And so our optimal solution now is at this point. And if we wanted to know what are the parameters used in that solution, we can go to the experiments table here, look for the column that is titled in field MPV and sort it to be from highest to lowest. And we can see here that this is the highest value and you can see a check mark next to optimal. And we can identify also the parameters that were used for this specific case. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.